here is worked out just right. And, you know, I have to, this is not part of the ritual or ceremony, but 27 years ago, I knelt at, at that very altar right there. And I never, ever, ever dreamed that I would have the honor and privilege of standing here uh, to install the altar of this lodge. Isn't, isn't God good to us? And I thank you soon to be worshipful for giving me and Brother Charlie the opportunity. The ceremony you're about to witness is one of installing of officers, which is synonymous with the inauguration of a person into a position of authority. It requires the recitation of the duties that are being assumed by those being installed and requires their assent that they will, to the best of their abilities, endeavor to fulfill these obligations. Usually, the installing officers are selected for this ceremony by the incoming master of the lodge. Those serving as installing officers must be past masters of this or of some other lodge, and they consider it an honor to be asked to perform this ceremony. Since this is the first time some of you may have attended an installation ceremony, we would like to inform you that only masons should respond when the gavel of authority is used. Masons consider this a solemn and dignified ceremony and hope that what you hear this afternoon will give you an even better opinion of Freemasonry and its teachings and what it expects of its members. Brother Marshall, is the Master-elect well-skilled in the science of Freemasonry and duly qualified to discharge the duties of his office? Yeah. You will then place him at the altar for installation. Merciful sir, I present my worthy brother, Timothy Andrew Barber, to be installed master of this law. I find in him to be, be, be of good boys and of good, great skills, true and trusty. And as he is a lover of eternity, I doubt not that he will discharge his duties with fidelity and with honor. Brother Barber, previous to your investiture, it is necessary that you signify your assent to those ancient charges and regulations which point out the duty of a master of the lodge. They are as follows. Do you agree to be a good man and true and strictly to obey the moral law? Yes. Do you agree to be a peaceful citizen and cheerfully conform to the laws of the country in which you reside? I do. You promise not to be concerned in plots or conspiracies against the government, but patiently to submit to the laws and constituted authorities. I do. You agree to pay a proper respect to the civil magistrates, to work diligently, live credibly, and act honorably by all men. I do. You agree to hold in veneration the original rulers and patrons of the order of masonry and their regular successors, supreme and subordinate according to their stations, and to submit to the reward to the awards and resolutions of your brethren when in lodge convened, in every case consistent with the constitutions of the order. I do. You agree to avoid private picks and quarrels and to guard against intemperance and excess. I do. You agree to be cautious in carriage and behavior, courteous to your brethren, and faithful to your lodge. I do. You promise to respect genuine brethren and to discountenance impostors and all dissenters from the original plan of Freemasonry. I do. You agree to promote the general good of society, to cultivate the social virtues, and to propagate the knowledge of the arts. I do. You promise to pay homage to the Grand Master for the time being and to his officers when duly installed and strictly to confirm conform to every edict of the Grand Lodge that is not subversive to the principles and groundwork of masonry. I do. You admit that it is not in the power of any man or body of men to make innovations in the body of masonry. I do. You promise a regular attendance on the committees and communications of the Grand Lodge on receiving proper notice and to pay a proper attention to all the duties of masonry on convenient occasions. I do. 
Do admit that no lodge shall be formed without the permission of the Grand Lodge, and that no countenance should be given to any irregular lodge or to any person clandestinely made a mason therein, being contrary to the ancient usages of the order. I do. You admit that no person can be made a mason in nor admitted a member of any lodge without previous inquiry and notice and due inquiry as to his character. Yes, I do. You agree that no visitor shall be received into your lodge without due examination and producing proper vouchers of their having been initiated in a regular lodge. I do. Brother Barber, these are the regulations of free and accepted masons. Do you submit to these charges and promise to support these regulations as masters have done in all ages before you? I do. Brother Barber, in consequence of your conformity to these charges and regulations of the order, you are now to be installed master of this lodge in full confidence of your skill and ability to govern the same. The holy writings, that great light of masonry, will guide you to all truth. It will direct your paths to the temple of happiness and point out to you the whole duty of man. The square dictates that we should mm, regulate, our actions. regulate our actions by rule and line and harmonize our conduct by the principles of morality and virtue. The compasses teach us to Regulate our, regulate our desires in every station, that rising to eminence by merit, we may live respected and die regretted. The rule directs we punctually discharge our duties, press forward in the paths of virtue, neither inclining to the right nor to the left, but in all our actions have eternity in view. The line teaches us the criterion of moral rectitude, to avoid dissimulation in conversation and action, and to direct our steps in the path which leads to immortality. The Book of Constitutions you are to search at all times. Cause it to be read in your lodge that none may pretend ignorance of the excellent precepts it enjoins. You now receive and charge the charter, by authority of which this lodge is held. You are carefully to preserve the same and duly transmit it to your successor in office. You also receive and charge the bylaws of this lodge, which you are to see carefully and punctually executed. You will now be solemnly inducted into the oriental chair of King Solomon. Master, behold your brethren. Brethren, behold your master. You will join me in public grand honors of three times three, taking your time for me. She was ready. Did you see that? Okay. Come on, let's go. One round, sir. She's with the program. Did you see that?
Worshipful sir, sir, I present my worthy brother Byron Lavoie Jenkins to be installed senior warden of this lodge. Brother Jenkins, you have been elected senior warden of this lodge and are now invested with the insignia of your office. The level teaches that we are descended from the same stock, partake of the same nature, and share the same hope. That we are children of one common parent, heirs of the same, inver same adversities, and exposed, and exposed the same, heirs of the same infirmities, and exposed the same adversities. This jewel also teaches that although distinctions among men are necessary to preserve subordination, yet no eminence of station should make us forget that we are brethren, and that in our Masonic associations we are on a level. This implement also teaches that a time will come, and the wisest knows not how soon, when all distinctions but that of goodness shall cease, and death, the grand leveler of all human greatness, reduce us to the same state. Your regular attendance on the stated and other meetings <clears throat> of the lodge is necessary. In the absence of the master, you are to govern the lodge, and in his presence assist him in the government of it. You will therefore perceive the necessities of preparing yourself for the important duties which may devolve upon you. Look well to the west, and guard with scrupulous care the pillar committed to your charge. First of all, sir, I present David Allen Reevely II to be installed junior warden of this law. What do you say? I just don't know dang but what's it? Reevely? Reevely. Reevely? Oh, Reevely, okay. I get where I can't hear and I sure can't see. Brother Reevely, you have been elected junior warden of this lodge and are now invested with the insignia of your office. The plum admonishes us to walk uprightly in our several stations, to do unto others as we would have others do unto us, to observe the just medium between intemperance and pleasure, and make our passions and prejudices coincide with the line of our duty. In the absence of the master and the senior warden, upon you devolves the government of the lodge, but to you is especially committed the superintendence of the craft during the hours of refreshment. It is, therefore, not only necessary that you should be temperate and discreet in the indulgence of your own inclinations, but carefully observe that none of the craft convert the purposes of refreshment to intemperance or excess. Look well to the south and guard with vigilance the pillar committed to your care that nothing may disturb the harmony of the lodge or mar its beauty. <laughs> Mike Stephen, you, you're the first treasure I have ever installed. <laughs> I hope it works for you. I hope it does too. <laughs> Present Michael Edwin Stevenson be installed treasurer of this lot. It's an honor that you're the first treasurer I've ever installed. That's honor. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, Mike. Most treasures just we don't reinstall them. I should have been studying a bit more. Shouldn't have bought. Brother Mike, you have been elected treasurer of this lodge and are now invested with the 
badge of your office. It is your duty to receive all money from the hands of the secretary, keep a true account of the same, and pay it out by order of the worshipful master and the consent of the lodge. Your own honor and confidence, the brethren repose in you, will excite you to that faithfulness and the discharge of the duties of your office, which its important nature demands. Worshipful sir, I present Patrick LeBron Duffy to be installed secretary of this lodge. Brother Patrick, you have been elected secretary of this lodge and now invested with the badge of your office. It is your duty to keep a true account of the transactions of the lodge, lawful to be written. Transmit a copy of the same of the Grand Lodge when required. Receive all monies due to the lodge and pay it to the treasurer, taking his receipt therefore. Your love for the craft and attachment to the lodge will induce you cheerfully to fulfill the duties of your office. By so doing, you will merit the esteem of your brethren. How many years, Father? Twenty. Mike said when you took that job, you were only 40. How are you, Patrick? Well, sir, I present Brother Ricky Jean Stansberry to be installed chaplain of this lodge. Worshipful Brother Stansberry, you have been appointed chaplain of this lodge. It is your duty to perform those solemn ceremonies which we should constantly render to our infinite Creator, and which, when offered by one whose holy profession is to point to heaven and lead the way, may by refining our souls strengthening our virtues and purifying our minds, prepare us for admission into the society of those above, whose happiness will be as endless as it is eternal. <laughs>
Worshipful sir, I present my worthy brothers, Andrew Howard Davidson, John Jeffrey McKinney, to be installed deacons of this lodge. Brethren, you have been elected deacons of this lodge. It is your duty to attend the master and wardens and act as their proxies during the active duties of the lodge, such as the reception of candidates and the introduction and accommodation of visiting brethren. With those rods and badges of your office, I now entrust to your care in full confidence of your skill and vigilance. Worshipful sir, I present my worthy brother Robert Charles. <laughs> worshipful sir, I present my worshipful brother Colby Morgan McKinney to be installed steward of this lodge. And then brother Robert, whenever he's able to be back with us, will be installed. And you guys be good. But brother, you have been elected uh, steward of this lodge. Do what? Oh, stewards are, oh, appointed stewards of this lodge. It is your duty to see the tables properly furnished at refreshment and that every brother is suitably provided <coughs> for to prepare and instruct the candidate, serve as his escort during a circumnavulation, and generally to assist the deacons and other officers in the discharge of their respective duties. Your regular and early attendance will furnish the best proof of your zeal and attachment to the lodge. First of all, I present my worthy brother James Willard Grubb to be installed Tyler of this lodge. Brother Grubb, you have been appointed Tyler of this lodge. The duty assigned you is of the utmost importance. Your constant attendance on the state and other meetings of the lodge cannot be dispensed with but by permission of the worshipful master. Be careful, therefore, and discharge the duty of your office with zeal and vigilance. I think if you wore that red shirt, the guy that on good day lets you say. I don't think so. No. Yeah, he's I know he is, yeah. I'll get him before I leave, though. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Worshipful Bro. Worship Master, you can stand up. Worshipful Master, having been chosen to preside over this lodge, you cannot be insensible to the duties which devolve upon you. The honor, reputation, and usefulness of your lodge will materially depend upon the skill and ability with which you manage its concerns. 
As master of this lodge, it will be your especial due to attend to the administration of its ceremonies, to preserve the ancient landmarks of the order now committed to your care. Permit no principle, permit no innovation in the principles or rights of the order. On all suitable occasions, remind the brethren that masonry is founded upon those great moral principles set forth in the sacred volume, which we receive as the rule and guide of our faith and practice. Exhort them to govern themselves by these principles, as well with the world at large as with each other. Teach them to reverence the three great lights, comprehending the holy Bible, the perfect square, and the extended compasses, the explanation of which must be familiar to your mind and which includes some of the most important duties inculcated by our order. As it is the great object of our institution to inculcate sound morality, to make men honest and upright, true to their God and faithful to their country, to unite them in the strong bonds of charity, friendship, and brotherly love, great care should be taken in the admission of members, lest by the introduction of bad material, the institution should be corrected. It should be constantly borne in mind that the respectability and usefulness of a lodge does not consist in the number, but in the character of its members. As it is the design of Freemasonry to create friendships, to make provision for the relief of poor and distressed brethren, to protect the widow and the orphan, to inculcate reverence to Almighty God, and encourage the growth of the social virtues which dignify and adorn human nature and render mankind peaceful and happy. The doors of the lodge should be closed against the idle, the intemperate, the prolific, and licentious. If, unfortunately, unworthy members should gain admission, it will be your duty to exercise proper discipline, to correct abuses, and to restrain the refractory. Unruly members should be reduced to order and the first risings of vice suppressed. And when kind and friendly admonitions fail, the unworthy should be removed as a blot upon the order. To preserve the purity of the order and maintain unimpaired its ancient rites and ceremonies, <clears throat> instruction is necessary. The mysteries of the order are to be unfolded and the moral duties inculcated. The minds of the brethren are to be enlarged and informed. They are to be frequently reminded of the, duty, of the duties they owe to Almighty God, the, the giver of every good and perfect gift. They must be taught to be good men and true, to be sober, industrious, charitable, upright in their dealings, friendly in their social intercourse, to live and love in peace, having consciousness, void of offense, and characters unspotted from the world. Thus taught and thus acting, they will recommend Freemasonry to the world. Let me see. What were the orders? Brother Senior and Junior Wardens, to you are committed the pillars of strength and beauty. It is your duty to set before the brethren who surround these pillars the corn of nourishment, the wine of refreshment, and the oil of joy and those moral principles inculcated by our order. In your own persons, you should give evidence that you are governed by these principles. As it is by a due regard for them in your own lives, you may expect obedience in others. Perform the respective duties of your stations, and the blessings of the widow and the fatherless will rest upon you. The prayers of the children of sorrow will cheer your dying hours, and you will receive from our Heavenly Father a reward incorruptible and undefiled that fadeth not away. Brethren of the Lodge, such is the nature of our Constitution that some must of necessity rule and teach, others submit and obey. The officers you have chosen and who have been solemnly installed are sufficiently acquainted with the rules of propriety and the laws of the institution to avoid exceeding the powers with which they have been entrusted. The harmony of the lodge will materially depend upon the good order you may maintain in the conduct of its business and the courtesy and forbearance you may extend toward each other during its deliberations. 
I charge you then, as you shall answer at that great day, that you walk worthy of the vocations by which you were called. Suffer no faults, no imperfections on your part to tarnish the luster of your jewels or bring discredit upon your craft. Recommend masonry to the world by the rectitude of your conduct. To this end, make yourselves intimately acquainted with all of its principles and obligations and practice in your lives all of its duties and requirements. Divest yourselves, brethren, of that coldness and apathy so fatal to your best interest. Shun those affections and groveling passions that are unworthy of the soul who claims affinity with the sons of life. Put forth all your exertions to grasp whatever is noble and elevated, whatever may lead to new and sublime ideas pertaining to our lofty destiny. Guard against dissension among yourselves. Let no root of bitterness spring up to trouble you. Put forth all your energies to preserve your lodge pure and prevent the introduction of vice and error in its thousand forms. If I, and brethren, if some individual brother should be subject to the occasional influences of unholy feelings and wander in the forbidden paths, seek the wanderer out, bring him back to the fold, show him the superior loveliness of virtue. And finally, brethren, be of one mind, live in peace. Let nothing disturb that pure, warm, and holy love our ritual enjoins. Follow these injunctions. I'm going to change your word, Bob. And our lodge will flourish. And may the tenets of our profession be transmitted unimpaired through our lodge from generation to generation. I now declare the officers of Harrison Lodge Number 114 of three accepted masons of the state of Tennessee, duly installed. Brother Marshall, you will make such proclamation. I now proclaim that the office of Harrison Lodge, number 114 of three accepted masons, of the state of Tennessee, duly and stop. serving as master, they, I guess, are technically eligible for the designation of past master. So uh, with that tradition here at Harrison, that we present the outgoing master with the past master's apron. So, there you go. So, Brother Robert, uh, man, I hate that 2020 was your year. That's all right. Everybody's got to go through it. But uh, with that... Uh, you did a fantastic job, so I'm going to present you with the past master's apron. Thanks, bro. He's getting very good.
and this year is no exception. The first thing I'd like to present to you is the pen of a Master Mason, which represents the, your power as a Master Mason. And I present that to you now. And you are to wear it whenever you have a, an official ceremony, you know, saying you know, whenever you want to. But that's, it's, it's your power as a Master. I'd also like to give you the the book of a Master Mason, which gives you the knowledge of how to be a Master. Okay. And now I'd like to give you the responsibility of the Lodge. Thank you. Congratulations. things we need to take care of as far as the ceremony goes, but uh, I would like everybody to just kind of real quickly introduce who their plus one is today. Uh, so I guess let's just start start over here. My plus one. Who are we introducing? Uh, we are introducing the plus ones that came oh, today. Oh. My name is Mike Stevenson and uh, my plus one's Uncle Bobby Harrell sitting over there. <laughs> <laughs> okay. oh. My wife Charlotte, she had to take my grandson somewhere, so she, well, she couldn't be here. You got any here? Uh, my name's Andrew Davidson. My plus one is my girlfriend, Miranda Morrow. She's pretty. What'd you find out? She's got glasses. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh. I was last. Uh, I got my wife Stephanie here with me. Mailbox, you find your girl again? Okay. I'll be your plus one mailbox. No, you're not plus one. Too late for that. Wow. And I'm not sure. You know what you do. Colby's your plus one. Colby's my plus one. Okay. Yeah. All right. Colby, is he, is he yours? Or? No, no. Colby's okay. plus one. All right. No, mine's my ring. That's my plus one. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 All right. Yeah. Who's next? I see some people that accounted for yeah. other than mine and Rick's. Yeah. Well, for my pastor, uh, my plus one is my wife, Candace, and I kind of one and a half. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, Portion master and guest. My plus one, I guess, is my daughter, and uh, she's all I got right now. Takes care of me and watches over me, and she does a fantastic job. And I'm real proud of her. And she's single. <laughs> she got a tough job. And I, have to, and I have to be very careful around her. You know, around guys come around, you know, because they notice her a little bit. But uh, it's honor to serve with you. All right, my plus one is my wife, Melissa. Hello, Melissa. Yeah. All right, so thank y'all, everybody, for coming. Uh, it's a man, it's a weird year, and it looks like it's going to continue into 2021 a little bit at least so uh, uh, just uh, just bear with us uh, as best yeah. as possible uh, it ain't making it no easier is it yeah no um, you know with the new officers coming in you know I'm here to help in any way I possibly can uh, Mike I know you got some things that require some extra help we're, we're here for you Thank you. Um, and Patrick buddy you and I are gonna be learning together I think so uh, and for those who don't know, Patrick and Mike both are past masters of this lodge as well. Uh, Rick, past master of uh, 199, uh, Chattanooga Lodge. Uh, we, we got a lot Charlie of Charlie is past Yeah, master. Charlie's past master of Harrison Lodge. Uh, Jim Harry's Rose. 199. Yeah. And, and, uh, Bobby, uh, I don't think you've been past master of this lodge, but you've been past master of a couple of others, right? Uh, Portly Lodge 601 and... 
Mountain City Lodge number 549. There you go. Most of them don't exist anymore. They don't run. Bunch of past masters out here. Yeah, we got a lot of good health. Uh, we'll like it. So uh, hopefully 2021 will be a good year. So uh, thanks to everybody. Uh, did I forget anything, Bob? Yeah, yeah, we do want to thank Terry, but especially uh, I thank y'all. We we don't see Terry a whole lot anymore. He's been trying to fix time over year. at 199, but Terry is is one of the few plural members of, of Harrison Lodge uh, as well. Uh, was actually raised here, so uh, we appreciate you doing the installation, Charlie. We appreciate you doing being Marshall for your first time. Here you go. Marshall Master. Uh, uh, I'd like to say normally this job that I did today, or attempted to do, was done by Brother Billy Crow. And Billy Crow was not able to get out and do anything anymore. And I'm doing it today, I did this today in honor of Billy Crow. Uh, he is.